Hello everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you at this location. Welcome to South Australia. Yes, here I am. This is a road trip. So I've traveled all day today and I've got to this location. To be absolutely honest with you, the weather is not treating me kindly. I've had a bit of rain uh, and I've got here. It's very late in the day and well, let's the camera looks pretty bright but it's pretty dark here i can tell you but i've made my way to this gorgeous old brick stone cottage on the other side of the road there so this is a place called bondley hall now it has been photographed by plenty of photographers so i'm certainly not an original here but i just love the perspective here i'm actually facing over towards the west here which is not where the Milky Way is going to be. In fact, I don't think there's going to be any Milky Way tonight at all. But apart from that, it doesn't matter. I'm here in South Australia and I want to bring you all sorts of content from this wonderful place. But first of all, let's go and have a bit of a look at this old building. All right, so there it is. Now, I'm in a bit of a predicament because as I said, the weather's not very good. But there is a little bit of clear sky over there, and that's pretty much facing back towards Adelaide. Adelaide's a big city. There's going to be a lot of light pollution over there on those clouds. But you know what? I'm thinking to myself, maybe I could just do a time lapse and just see what happens with these clouds. There's not going to be any Milky Way over there, um, and who knows? But hey, I'm here. If, if I wanted to catch the Milky Way, it's over that way. So to really do that, I've got to get down behind the building. I've got to have a good look around first, but I can certainly do it from here. And what I might do is just set up some low level lighting, a light here and a light down there, just to give a little bit of light onto this building and do a time lapse. Why not? I've been doing heaps of time lapses recently and I think, hey, I might just set up uh, over the other side of the road there, have a cup of tea, relax, smell the roses. Oh, I'll tell you what. I don't care if there's clouds, I'm going to do something here because this building is just so beautiful. All right guys, so what I have done, I've scrambled around the back of my car because it's getting dark. I'm going to set up these Z96 video lights. I'm going to set one up over there, one up just down there and just get that cross lighting across both sides of the hall. Now I've already started my time lapse and as you can see here from what I have done, um, the building is in darkness at this point in time. Wow, this is a busy road. There's cars coming up and down here. Anyway, um, the building is in darkness. The sky looks fantastic. I've set my camera into aperture priority mode. So it's taking, uh, it's going to take 600 photos with an interval of 15 seconds. So what that means is it, every 15 seconds the shutter will trigger. Now, I've set my uh, shutter speed so it'll go up to probably about 13 seconds maximum. I don't think it'll even get there tonight because it depends on how much light pollution we find down there on the horizon. But needless to say, the camera is in total automated mode. I've got auto ISO set, auto, uh, aperture, uh, aperture is set to f2.8, so it's in aperture priority and the shutter speed is variable as well. I've even got auto white balance, would you believe that? So I've set it onto uh, um, auto well at the moment it's on daylight but it's going to change depending on what happens with those clouds but at the moment those clouds are looking absolutely awesome so I'm just going to put some light on this building and we'll go from there so we can see here that's what we're getting at the moment there's no light on the building because it's just too much ambient light but I am going to set my lights up and when I do that I think it'll look fantastic man there's more cars coming this is a pretty busy place, I can tell you. Now I've also attached a lens warmer because I just don't know what I'm gonna get later. It's been pretty humid, there's been a fair bit of rain. So I've got my battery down here underneath on the tripod. Currently it's not plugged in, but uh, as the night progresses, I'm gonna plug that in and make sure that we get something, uh, hopefully works quite well. Okay, so things are going well. I've set my two lights up. There's one all the way down there. I hope you can see that. So it's off on an angle, probably about oh, 20 meters away from the camera down that way. There's another one just over in this paddock, which is only, oh, it's probably about 10 meters from the camera. 
but it's, it's going to shine on the side of the building. So currently as it stands at the moment, there's too much ambient light, but I'm just going to have a break. Camera's going quite well. Let me just have a look at what settings. Uh, it's shooting at f2.8, 2.5 second shutter speed at ISO 100 currently. And the way these Nikon work with the intervalometer, which is built into the camera, is that it ramps the shutter speed first and then the ISO. So what will happen, the shutter speed will get longer and longer and longer. And when it gets to its uh, limit, which I think is gonna be about somewhere around about 10 or maybe 13 seconds, then the ISO is gonna start coming up. Um, I reckon I just felt a spot of rain. That's all we need, rain, oh boy. But it's coming from that direction, which is good because the camera is actually facing away from it. So even if it does start to rain, what I'll do is I'll put a, a, a cloth or something over the tripod. And uh, <laughs> we're in South Australia. What do you reckon? This is fantastic. There's actually a nice bit of clear sky over there. So uh, the, the sky is lit up quite nicely on the time lapse. Uh, and, and later on, well, Adelaide's over there. So I think it's over there. Look, I've never been here before. So it's, I know it's not that way because that's the way I came from Victoria. I can see a few stars up there. Everyone told me it was going to be totally clouded out tonight. I think we're going to get a bit of everything. We're going to get rain, hail, and maybe stars. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to go and have something to eat. I'm actually starving. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. First things first, I've got my jet boil boiling away here. I'm going to boil some water. So I need some more water and um, then I'm going to be cooking up something. I'm right on the side of the road here and it is trying to rain. Let me tell you, I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is boil this water because if I don't do that, I won't have any hot water later on uh, to have a cuppa. The wind is trying to blow that out. So the wind's getting up a bit. I'm definitely feeling rain. I don't know if you can see that. But, if you can see behind me, um, it doesn't look too bad down there. So I'm actually quite pleased with, with what's happening here at the moment. There's a bit of clear sky over the top of the, the hall over there, which is looking great. I'm having butter chicken with bals uh, oh, some sort of rice. I can't read it. Did I tell you I need glasses? I'm gonna have glasses very soon. I need them for reading now, but I need them for just about everything. I don't know. That's what happens when you get a bit older, I suppose. Ah, oh, this is the life. Where else would you want to be? This is awesome. I've got to need it. I know this from last time when I was in Tasmania. You've got to do this. Otherwise, it gets all clunky. Wow. I've got to be careful not to shine my head torch over onto that building in the background. So I've got to keep it down low. And also, I'm going to go over there and progressively just drop down the brightness of those lights. All right, so I'm at ISO 2000, 13 second shutter speed, but my biggest problem is I've run out of gas here. So, thankfully, I've got another gas um, bottle, which is quite a large one. So I should have checked that before I left home. There wasn't much in that one. Never mind. That's why I've got a spare. So I'm going to put this one on. And we will continue because I've got to make sure. Now, this is my invention, as you've probably seen this before. Jet boil with a tripod mount underneath. And it is absolutely awesome. It works so well. Mmm, beautiful. So once again, my jet boil. It's all you need, a little frying pan. Something you can quickly cook up. I'm here on location. There's the hall over there, you probably can't see it. It's very windy though. So thankfully it's not very cold. I don't know what the temperature is, maybe about 16 degrees, but I've got to go and see what the camera's doing. But what I did, I turned the the low level lights right down to their very dimmest. There's still a bit of a glow in that sky and there's gonna be a glow because that's where Adelaide is. So that's good. I just wanna make sure we can still see the building. 
You know, it's a bit of a trial and error because you can't keep adjusting it. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. It just jumps. And I can't see a preview now because it's the shutter speed has got up to its maximum. So it's about 13 seconds. I don't think it's going to go any more than that. So because of that, there's not enough room for a preview to show before the next shot takes. So I can't see if the lighting is right. I'm just going by gut feeling. I know a lot of you are going to ask me about lighting. A lot of it is practice, trial and error, gut feelings. And they're, they're, I know they're intangibles, but for me, that's how I do it. Okay, well, I've just come in from outside. It's fair dinkum raining at the moment. Not heavy, and the wind is blowing it sideways. <laughs> but it is pushing it into the back of the camera, not into the front where the lens is. I do have that lens warmer on the front. By the way, I'm using my Laowa 15mm f2 lens, which is not weather sealed. Pretty anxious about making sure the tripod doesn't blow over. Now, the tripod is straddling the fence. And from sitting in the car here, I can actually see the light of the camera. So I know it hasn't been blown over. I can also see the lights of the, the light stands. And they're also not blown over. So that's a bonus. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The things we do. Why do we do this? So I'm patiently sitting here in the car. Uh, I've got about an hour and a bit to go before that time lapse is finished. I really don't know what I'm going to get here. Um, at the moment, it's 100% cloud cover. So I'm just hedging all my bets here on there being a little bit of texture in those clouds with that light pollution coming from underneath. But anyway, I hope it comes out all right. Well, hello guys and welcome back you know a lot has happened since we last spoke and i was a bit frustrated with my initial shoot here because well it was raining and uh, i ended up with my time lapse over there look it went okay but i was pretty determined to get back here again so right now it's two days after when we first started so I've, i came back here last night and Lo and behold, we had, for a while anyway, beautiful clear skies. Bit of cloud around which, which sort of added to the ambience of the scene. But I was able to set up my tracker and shoot across the hills over there and get uh, a beautiful shot of the uh, Southern Cross and a few nebulas up there and also the Milky Way core rising up across this hill. And then I just went back over there and got some shots behind the hall facing this way to blend in and make it into, well, I hope, a bit of a masterpiece.
So for these shots, I used my Astro Modded Nikon Z6 camera. And I wasn't going to take a whole lot of images and stack them together. So I wanted to do a little bit more uh, experimenting on this trip. So anyway, I just took single shots and then when the core rose up above that hill over there, I did exactly the same thing. So I was shooting at uh, f2.8, about one minute shutter speeds at uh, ISO 800 or thereabouts. I did experiment a little bit. I went as high as 1600 for a couple of the shots. Hey, you don't always want to do the same thing, but what a beautiful old hall. What a beautiful subject this is, and I'm so glad I came back to capture it. I wanted to do my fine art light painting around the building because it just lends itself so well to that. I always think that any textured subject like this with the bricks and the rocks and the stonework just looks so good when you put the lights off on different angles. And so that's what I did. It wasn't very difficult to light paint this building. There's not that much complication about it, but I'm really pleased that I actually went to the effort to do it. And so there you have it, another awesome Nightscape Images adventure on this old hall comes to a conclusion. And I'm so pleased that I took the time to come back here and shoot again. So that's the end of this episode, but my road trip around South Australia continues. I'm heading off down the Flurio Peninsula, which is down uh, the ocean. So I'm gonna see some waves. I'm looking forward to that. The weather's warming up. Looks like it's improving. So hopefully I can get some great shots down there. All right, well, anyway, you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.